The Liberators, a superhero team or supervillain team for the Ultimate Marvel Universe, a now dead reality focusing on more gritty storylines. Or was dead. The Liberators are a team of heroes from across the globe to challenge America's superheroes, seeing it as they are a possible threat. Now all this sounds, in my opinion, very promising, global politics. However, the approach, the approach was interesting to say the least. Now this storyline comes with a very interesting reveal, that being that Black Widow is secretly a spy for the Liberators, which in itself I can get by with. However, what happens next very much villainizes both Black Widow, other countries that are America, and the Liberators all together. That being that Black Widow, with a team of soldiers, storm into Hawkeye's house, murder his family, and she herself kills his son. She also kills Edwin Jarvis, who is Tony Stark's butler, of which she was engaged to at the moment. Yeah, this storyline really just completely character assassinated Black Widow. And it also starts off with what is going on with the Liberators, and that being the fact that they aren't exactly heroes, but very much clearly villains, because they're at fault for the death of children. That, in my opinion, is not the best way to go this route. It could have been an interesting commentary on global politics, but instead it villainizes other countries that aren't America that view America as a threat. Something that I think is understandable if America has a group of superheroes and no other country does. However, the storyline doesn't want to talk about that commentary. Instead, it only wants to talk about them being evil. It comes across as it's just saying America is superior to everybody. Which very much is likely the case because there are a lot of lines in this storyline and other storylines in the Ultimate Universe that imply something about those means, especially from Captain America. Captain America in the Ultimate Universe is a very um, interesting character. <laughs> He's very different than his 616 counterpart. This storyline in itself is actually a pretty interesting way to look at how one could be biased when they're writing something as there is clearly a very strong bias in the way this is written. As in, can you tell that the people that wrote this are American? <laughs> now, this isn't me bashing on America, by the way. I myself am not American. I am Canadian. However, I feel as if villainizing every single country that is in America in itself is in poor taste. It completely just, in my opinion, destroys the argument that the liberators are trying to make. Because their argument and motivation to why they're doing what they're doing could make sense, but then they go and kill Hawkeye's family, which automatically turns them into villainized characters. Characters you can't empathize with at all. Because they're in no shape or form heroes if they do just that, which they did. A lot of the members are also depicted as being straight up villains. <laughs> no, not all of them, but majority of them are. The Ultimates also don't seem to have any sympathy towards other heroes that are also being put in this situation. Especially Captain America. <laughs> Captain America in the Ultimate Universe, I have to admit, is probably one of my least favorite characters. <laughs> I like Captain America in 616 Universe. In fact, I think I like him more than most people do. But <laughs> in the Ultimate Universe, the character is always depicted as being a very... um, A character who is... Definitely based on a stereotype that is realistic, I suppose. That being the basic ignorant American guy. Which, yes, I suppose there are guys like that in real life. But I don't know if you really want your Captain America to be that kind of guy. There's also an infamous line in the series where um, uh, Captain America just bashes on France. Saying America doesn't retreat or surrender or show mercy that last part is a little questionable to me <laughs> i think they're trying to make it seem like a really cool line but in my opinion it just makes him come across like he has a huge ego as well as if it's glorifying the tragedies of history now the liberties of course will be defeated and black widow herself will be killed by hawkeye and after that a of a video of Black Widow and Iron Man got leaked. <laughs> oh my god, a lot happened, but we're not going to talk about that part. <laughs> After the arc, the Liberators, for the most part, weren't really around except for one member. That being the Insect Queen, who would later be renamed Red Wasp. 
She had believed to have been killed in the fight between the Liberators and the Ultimates, but had actually survived, and would be recruited onto the Avengers, where she found somewhat redemption. <laughs> she would also be responsible for killing the frickin' Red Skull, which is a pretty big deal. Also, side note, the reason why I say somewhat redemption is because the rehabilitation program at S.H.I.E.L.D. is um, more um, suicide squatty. As in bombs and threats. If you're threatened to be killed, is it really your choice to be redeemed? I suppose it makes sense because it was Nick Fury who did it to her, and in this universe, Nick Fury is a bit shady, kind of like Amanda Waller. And I do think the character Red Wasp wasn't a bad character. However, for the Liberators as a whole, I think it was a wasted idea, because I like the idea of global politics and the idea of different countries having different heroes. And them kind of not being a big fan of the fact that the American government has so many heroes. But then they just villainize the idea of anyone opposing America's ideas and values. It could have been a very interesting conversation to have. But we didn't get it. And that's it. Like always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!